Hey guys, so we're gonna try to film this outside today. Um, it's actually starting to sprinkle as I am doing this, so we'll see how well this works. Um, the toddler's playing, the birds are chirping. I'm not sure how much of all that's gonna be picked up here, or if I'm going to have to move because it's raining. But um, I wanted to do a wrap up of my May reading month, and since we're like a little bit into, into June, I'm gonna include June as well. The reason it took me so long is because I was in the middle of a bunch of books and I was like oh I just want to finish these and then I'll do a wrap up and then it turns out that I'm like always in the middle of a bunch of books so we're just gonna wrap up with kind of like the books that I've read in the last uh, five or six weeks um so I got a few big books out of the way right at the beginning of May I yeah yeah the balls on your head um, I started out the month by finishing Unlocked, which means I'm caught up to the Keeper of the Lost City series. Uh, this book is kind of different in the way that it's, it's a variety of different things. It's got pictures and portraits and all sorts of different things. And then there's only like 200 pages of a story in here. And yeah, so because I had just, there's going to be so many interruptions. Um, because I had just finished like the rest of the series, I think I read five of the books in the series in April. This felt really redundant, so I kind of, I didn't read it as slowly or as in depth as maybe you would have if you were like waiting for this book to come out, you know, if you're reading the series as they come out. Um, but the last 200 pages, the story was interesting. And um, we get to see Keith's side and I really enjoyed that. He's definitely one of my favorite characters in the series. Uh, yeah, so I got this chunker out of the way. And then the second book that I finished was The Way of Kings. Um, I've kind of talked about this in a few different videos so far in the last few weeks. Um, I have a dedicated review all about it, so I don't really know how much to say. It's just, I'm glad I'm reading the series. It's one of Jared's favorites, possibly his favorite. So I want to read it so we can talk about it because he wants to talk about it. But it's definitely not my favorite. It's There's a lot going on. It's a little bit, it feels a little above me, honestly. So yeah, my plan is to read one book a month in, um, I guess tell it I'm done. So I should have one June, July, August, and then I should be caught up. Uh, I haven't even started June's book yet though. There was that. Oh, I should tell you. Um, oh, apparently I didn't even realize. So I have been using my reading journal, which um, is still free. I'll leave the link below. You can get it for free until the 15th of the month, uh, the link and the coupon code. Um, so I've been keeping track in there. And apparently I gave these both five stars. So this one started out slow and apparently the ending was good enough that I, I gave it five stars. Then I listened to You're Not Enough and That's Okay. It's a nonfiction, Christian nonfiction book by Ellie Beth Stuckey, I think. Thankfully the power of technology, you guys don't have to wait around as I take the toddler for a potty break. Um, okay, so um, You're Not Enough and That's Okay. Uh, I liked the book. I struggled with the terminology because there's like this kind of like movement in the Christian world where there's people saying like you're not enough like they're kind of like pegging it on that and then there's other people saying you are enough because of Christ you are enough and it just feels like the wording you have to be so careful of what you say these days because people take it the wrong way um so I really enjoyed the book I like believe what she is saying I just didn't really like the title because I feel like so much these days is just like I don't know people are kind of like jumping on each other because you said something slightly incorrectly or people took it the wrong way um but I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars and I was really excited to find out that she has a podcast. So I subscribed to it, but I haven't actually listened to it yet. So hopefully I can do that soon. Um, and then I read The Inheritance Games, which is another one that I have been talking about quite a bit lately uh, because we are doing a buddy read of The Westing Game later this month. It's going to be live on my channel. Um, and I was kind of talking about, they're apparently supposed to be the same thing. I haven't actually read The Westing Game yet, but I enjoyed the inheritance games i gave that one four stars as well but like it stuck with me that one might eventually get bumped or at least bumped in my mind i don't really go back and like change things um but it's it's about um this girl who gets called to this reading of a will the whole family's there and it turns out like everything's left to her and the family's not so impressed because she doesn't even know this guy and yeah things ensue i would highly recommend it i don't like a ton of ya um because often it can be I don't know, like towing the line, and I don't feel like this one did it all. Like I, I really enjoyed it. Okay, now book off my stack. Um, on my Patreon, we uh, buddy read the Book Woman of Troublesome Creek in the month of May, and I did videos sharing my thoughts um, throughout the month. And I overall really enjoyed this book. It's historical fiction about um, 
vehicles, uh, no, not about vehicles, about the Kentuck Kentucky Blue people. And then our main character is also a pack horse librarian. So this was really interesting. Um, there are like a few things that kind of bothered me throughout the book, but for the most part, I really liked it. And as someone that doesn't really read a lot of historical fiction or really like a lot of historical fiction, um, that's saying a lot. Uh, it does make me, t it is, has tempted me to read uh, The Giver of the Stars, but I think I'll wait until I've like kind of been away from this book for a while before I give that book a try. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed this one. This one was a four star book for me. Okay, and then one that I chose for the TBR that I did that was live that you guys helped me with is The Princess and the Goblin. Um, yeah, so I finally read this book. This is a classic and I can't even really tell you what it's about, you guys. I know Holly is going to be so disappointed in me because this is one of her all-time favorite books and I gave it two stars. Um, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't like the reading process. I didn't, I didn't like the ending. I, I, I didn't like it. It's about a princess and goblins. I don't really know. I didn't like it. A book that I've been reading for the last few months is Seasons of a Mother's Heart. This is kind of like a homeschool mothering book and this is I think the third or fourth time I've reread this book and it is still a five-star book for me. Um, it really encourages me every... I read it like every year or two and um, makes me want to be like a gentler parent and slow down a bit and yeah just gonna keep rereading this one so definitely five stars then I, there's a couple books that I started that I haven't finished um, I might do well, I'm planning on doing a like books I DNF'd and then you have to like pick which ones I finish because yeah there was a few that were on my TBR that are in that stack at least one for sure um, yeah but then one I did read that I really enjoyed is Alone this is a free verse novel about a girl who lives in Colorado and like suddenly overnight her whole town area is evacuated and she's the only one left she's got to figure out like how to survive and so it's very like island of the blue dolphins but like modern uh and free verse and i really really like this one then i listened to the winterborn series currently there's two books out um the first one is called i think it's called winterborn home house winterborn home for mystery and mayhem or something and then the second one is vengeance and valor and i really enjoyed them they were like four-ish star books for me um, just like a fun middle grade read about um, orphans that come across these mysterious things that happen. Um, the Winterborns are a family that have like mysterious past and I don't want to say too much because I went into it with like zero expectations and just had fun with it and my daughter read them and loved them and I'm gonna get my third grade uh, third grade son to read them for next year because uh, I think he's gonna really like them as well. Okay and I didn't read these books like one after another. I uh, had some books in between but I actually read an entire trilogy. So I read Mind Games, Firestorm, and Dead End. So this is a series that follows um, a... Those are my kids yelling as they have fun chasing each other. Um, a woman who is a behavioral analyst, um, pretty much like a, a profiler uh, for serial killers. And like the interesting part is that her father was a serial killer and yeah, so how much do I say? This is Christian Suspense. I enjoyed it overall. I think I gave the first one four and a half stars, and I think the other two were like four stars. This is my first time reading anything from this author, and I'm definitely interested to check out more of her stuff. There are some things that were like a little bit stereotypical. <sighs> Interrupted again. Um, I don't remember what I was all saying, but yeah, overall, I enjoyed the series and want to read more of her books, or at least try more of hers. And then one that I mentioned. I don't know where I mentioned this actually, um, is Trace of Doubt. Oh yes, on my anti anticipated releases. So this book I think only comes out, either it did just barely or it is right away. Um, it's by Diane Mills and it is a book about an ex-con who gets released and then um, things start happening. So she's been blamed for this murder, or no, not blamed for murder, she murdered her brother-in-law and then um, she's getting threatened when she gets out of jail. And yeah, and I was really impressed with how much like faith there was in the book. Normally with Christian fiction, it's very surface level. And this one wasn't like our main character became a Christian when she was serving her 15 year sentence. And, um, you know, she really lived like it. And I really appreciated that and would like to try more Diane Mills books as a result. Then I started another middle grade series. And this one is uh, the first book is called Premeditated Myrtle. Uh, so it's a middle grade uh, mystery series and I enjoyed the first book. book I gave it four stars. Uh, it's about a girl Myrtle Hardcastle who's very very like Sherlock-esque. Um, I've been finding a lot of good 
middle grade and just mystery books in general lately. I think I'm going to do a video about that. Um, and I'm currently listening to book two, which is called um, How to Get Away with Myrtle. I like their little play on words there. Um, so if you like middle grade detective stories, I would recommend that one. Then for my Read Your Bookshelf Challenge, the prompt for me was to read a book that you were supposed to read in high school. And I actually read this book in high school, but I didn't get it, understand it, so I thought I would try it again. And that is Animal Farm. And you guys, I didn't like it just as much as I didn't like it back in high school. Um, yeah, I don't know. We don't need to talk about Animal Farm. I am going to do a video, hopefully in the next couple weeks, sharing like my um, kind of a roundup of how I've been doing with the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge and what I plan on reading for the rest of the year. Um, if you guys are not part of that, I'll, <laughs> I'll leave the announcement video linked that I did back in December uh, because we, I am doing a $100 uh, giveaway for a $100 gift certificate for books, obviously. Uh, so definitely get involved in that. And then I think the only other book that I finished, yes, is Satisfied. This is by Alyssa Bethke, I think is how you pronounce her last name. I think this one just came out. I read it on NetGalley. It is um, all about being like satisfied in Christ and I really enjoyed it. Um, the format on NetGalley, obviously because it's an ebook, is no, there's a lot of pictures in the book, like just her family life pictures, um, which maybe would have been more interesting if I actually like had listened to their podcast or followed them or read anything by them before but I actually still really enjoyed it and I think it would be really nice to um, see in like physical form uh, but this was really a very encouraging book and great for like my current season of life which is just feeling very chaotic um, and I think I want to buy this I have a friend that I want to buy a copy for so that's my wrap up of beginning of May until now I'm in the middle of like five books and have a bunch more that I want to read before the end of the month so I may have a dedicated rest of June wrap up or I might do like a end of June and July wrap up uh, we'll see what happens so I would love to hear what you've been reading lately anything good that you think would be a recommendation for me for the summer and yeah thanks again for watching guys <laughs>